Kale Bernard. I'll be got, talking to you guys about a very controversial topic that you may think you know a lot about. But I will be explaining to you facts and statistics that you may not have heard in your experiences and uh, learning about the topic of offshore drilling. Okay, first of all, you're th maybe you're thinking, what is offshore drilling? There's a lot of people, they aren't exactly studied on this topic. Offshore drilling is just drilling for oil, like the, which is what we make gasoline out of. Like gasoline goes in your car, that's oil. And we drill in various places, on land, um, on the coast, and in the, in the middle of the ocean, because it's oil is stored in pockets below the earth, and we drill for it. Um, it's really easy. You don't have to do a lot. You just put a drill bit into the earth, put a pipeline down, and you suck it up. Um, the good thing about it is it creates jobs. Oil derricks, they're just massive. You can create you can have hundreds of workers working on this. And a lot of people are talking about how unemployment's up and there's not a lot of jobs in the economy. That's a good way to do it, would be get more offshore drilling. And with the more offshore drilling we have, there's no need to import. A lot of people are talking nowadays about how we are dependent on foreign oil and all this. We have so much reserves in the near the United States that we if we were to tap into more offshore drilling, we would have no need to do such things as buy um, oil from the Arabs. Here's some facts on uh, offshore drilling. Um, offshore drilling puts uh, leaks, put very little crude oil into the ocean. A lot of people are were commenting a while back about that uh, leak in the Gulf of Mexico. The leak in the Gulf of Mexico, I'm gonna, I have a, a pie chart with some statistics on it. It was minimal. It was, it was pathetic. People made it up to be really big. Naturally, oil seeps from land and from the ocean up, and that accounts for 60% of all oil leakage. Man-made and all that, that's like less than 40%. So just to give you some perspective. Um, Alaska, our, uh, our, our friend in the north, they are a crude oil gold mine. A lot of uh, people um, rallied and stopped uh, drilling in Alaska because they said it was calling off the population. But actually, it stimulated a lot of the animals' bathing season because the pipeline was so warm. So populations start booming around these uh, pipelines. Same with the Gulf of Mexico. There are other countries that have tapped in, including Mexico, into the Gulf of Mexico's potential. But unfortunately, for environmental regulations and all sorts of regulations, we don't tap into the Gulf of Mexico's oil reserves as much as we could or as much as we should. This is what the news is going to tell you. Um, offshore drilling kills sea life, it pollutes the ocean, and the oil that leaks is going to wash out of the beaches. And you see my pie chart right there. Natural seeps of oil, 63%. Spills by petroleum users, that's 33%. That's stuff like people using gasoline and cars, that's from the land seeping into the ocean. Pipeline related, which is where we pump it up from, 1% shifts. And barges, 2%. And drilling, only 1%. So it's, as you can see, pollutants are very minimal. Why this should not concern you? Um, as far as offshore drilling kills sea life, yes, inevitably any construction that you put into the ocean or on land is going to hurt somebody's habitat. But once again, it is very minimal. A lot of people say that uh, the pollution is just killing everything. But as I showed you in the previous statistic, it's a minimal amount of pollution. If the oil is killing sea life, it is obviously oil that has seeped in from land or other uses other than drilling. They also say it pollutes the ocean. But once again, back to the statistic, humans are not the ones that are putting the oil, most of the oil in the ocean. A lot of the oil is caused from nature, seeping in through the, from the ocean bed or, or leaking in through the beaches. So the pollution in the ocean is there and we can't stop it, but we're not the main cause of it. Also, um, people, um, and especially scientists, so some bioscientists, say that it washed up in the beaches. They talk about the beads they see on the beaches. But that happens all the time. If there was no oil spill in the Gulf, you would have still seen those beads on the beaches. They did a study, and they found out, because they went to an area, and they tested in a small, like, confined lake. Oh yeah, we put some oil on the beach, and then we took it away, and the beads still came there, because Obviously, as I was talking about earlier, oil naturally seeps up through nature and through environmental processes into water. What should, what should concern you? Because there are some major concerns about oil drilling for oil that need to be addressed that, aren't, that you don't necessarily know about. Fires. As you know, gasoline explodes. Gasoline is from crude oil. 
So there is a huge potential because they're pumping hundreds of thousands of billions of gallons out of these things. Something would catch on fire, it'd be like a nuclear bomb going off, a massive explosion. That's why you have to have stuff like ships that uh, pump water and help fight these fires. Um, large storms, especially hurricanes, have a high potential to damage any, um, any uh, sea vessel or ocean rig. <coughs> Winds or lightning could uh, decimate or destroy it, which would inevitably cause oil leakage and would be potentially harmful to any sea life and the whole ecosystem. And pirates. Jack Sparrow is a pirate, but that's just a joke. That is a real kind of pirate. That, that's a picture of pirates, um, the Somalian pirates. Um, there is a good chance, because oil is worth a lot of money, you can have pirates, modern, not just swords and cutlasses, but guns, grenade launchers, all sorts of crazy stuff, go on to an oil rig, and there, there have been events where this has happened, and, and they've stolen stuff. They've stolen, they've stolen product, They've, they've hindered production, and they've sabotaged machinery. So that is a legitimate concern that you have to worry about on an oil rig. OK, where can we currently drill? This is a picture where um, it shows a no zone. A no zone is where basically it says that we're not allowed to drill. That's all the red. Look at all the Alaska along the coast right there, all the east coast, all throughout Florida and the Gulf right there, and all along the California <coughs> coast. And we have almost no drilling right there in the major part of the Gulf, where the yellow and green are. So as you can see, we are stuck with onshore drilling, which unfortunately is not nearly as plentiful as drilling in the ocean or drilling uh, on the coast. What's the solution to this? Use what we have. We do not need to be importing oil from Arabic countries or South America or wherever we're going to be importing. So we have massive reserves either on our land or off our shores. Stop supporting people that hate us. When we buy um, oil from places like Iran, what are we doing? We are, we are supporting their economy and we are supporting countries that openly are aggressive against the United States and our allies. And of course, we can live happily ever after because who wouldn't want to uh, have a job? And, and oil derricks and uh, places like that create hundreds of jobs. And that makes everybody happy. Um, I got most of my information from the scientific scientificamerican.com and the silentearth.com. Are there any questions? How many oil rigs or offshore oil rigs do you have off the East Coast? I'm not certain. I didn't calculate the amount. I just know that it's a very insignificant number compared to what other countries are doing right now because of our environmental regulations. I don't have a question. I just wanted to compliment you. You're very nicely dressed. You support your topic. You look like a real person, a real, uh, not a real person, but a person who was actually doing a presentation to support this, which you were outside of a class. So it was very professionally delivered. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you. What a nice way to end our first day of persuasive speech, Caleb.